Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Lodz, located in Lodz, Poland. At the time it was part of the Russian Empire and involving the German 9th Army versus the Russian 1st, 2nd, and 5th Armies on November 11th through December 6th, 1914. The fighting had been fierce during the fall, and German armies in the east were barely recovering from repeated large battles. The Germans were pinned against the Russian armies, and the Russian numbers were swelling. On November 1st, Paul von Hindenburg took control of both German armies on the Eastern Front. The information indicated the Russians would be attacking Silesia on November 14th. This resulted in Hindenburg deciding not to wait for them, but instead bring the battle to the Russians in an unexpected location. He deployed General August von Mackensen and his German 9th Army, along with elements of the German 8th Army, to shift north and attack the Russian right flank before the Russians knew it hit them. Combat began on November 11th as Mackensen directed the 1st and 25th Reserve Corps from the 9th Army to attack Russia's 5th Siberia Corps of General Paul von Rennenkamp's 1st Army near Wolokowik on the German side of the Vistula River. It was an attempt to dislodge the Russians before they could dig into the Russian side and reinforce it. Upon reports of the attack, Renenkampf asked Russian HQ if he could send his 6th Siberian Corps as reinforcements to help the 5th Siberian Corps, but he was denied by his commanders. The 5th Siberian Corps was pushed southward, and as they lost ground, German General Mackensen realized there was a chink in the line, and he ordered the entire 9th Army forward. Even with the entire German 9th Army attacking him, the Russian HQ did not believe there was a major German force in their flank. Instead, they continued with their attack on Silesia on November 14th. This allowed the Germans to slip even deeper into their flank and rear lines. By November 15th, the Germans had captured Kutno and crossed the Bzura River, capturing Strykow as well. On November 18th, the 25th Reserve Corps had captured Brezny, and the 20th and 17th Corps began their attack on the Russian defenses of Lodz. Russian reinforcements were finally ordered north to help defend Lodz, and it was by mere circumstance that General Pavel Pleve and his 5th Army was able to prevent the complete encirclement of Lodz. This gave the Russians seven corps to defend the city and more than 300,000 troops. The Germans were now outnumbered, and they were the attacking force, so they didn't have the advantage of defensive work. This didn't phase General Mackensen at all, though, and he pushed the 20th and 25th Reserve Corps to continue their mission to flank Lodz. However, there was not much progress by November 21st, and the Russians had just sent two more Russian divisions plus three brigades, with only the German 19th Dragoon Regiment to slow them down. The Germans, realizing how precarious this position was, sent Lieutenant General Reinhard von Schäfer Boyodel and Lieutenant General Manfred von Richthofen, yes, the great uncle to Baron von Richthofen, to fly an ace. Their troops were to push towards Lodz and assist the Germans. In retaliation, Russian General Renenkampf sent a portion of his first army to assist the Russian troops but they were denied doing that when the makeshift bridges across the river collapsed and they had to travel 50 miles upstream to use ferries to cross. Even with the setback though, the Russians retook Brezny and cut off several German corps. The German troops in that pocket did not receive commands from German HQ to pull back and they kept pushing forward, which resulted in them being encircled by the Russians. Realizing those troops were trapped, German General Mackensen ordered his attack on Lodz to stop and turn to rescue the 25th Corps. The Russians, anticipating victory, ordered enough trains from their supply depot to round up 50,000 German troops. The Russians didn't realize there were only 14,000 Germans in the pocket, and 3,000 of them were already wounded or incapacitated. German command intercepted the orders for those trains, but before they could panic, General Mackensen reassured command that he would rescue the stranded German troops. The encircled Germans had Richthofen's cavalry shift locations from leading their push to attacking the enemy at the rear. This caught the Russians off guard as the Germans attacked with bayonets in the early morning hours in the town of Brezny. The Russian commander Gennings got conflicting information and had a breakdown as he kept changing his orders before they could be implemented. While the Russian commander remained confused, the Germans went house to house and captured more than 12,000 Russian prisoners and more than 64 pieces of Russian artillery. The Germans and Russians continued to fight around Lodz until November 29th when German General Hindenburg learned from an intercepted message that the Russian Tsar Grand Duke Nicholas had ordered his forces to withdraw to Warsaw. The Germans waited until December 6th and then walked in and took the city of Lodz without firing a shot on that day. They had ended up capturing a city with more than half a million people 
and heavy industrial capability. The Germans had 35,000 casualties, including those killed, wounded, or missing, while the Russian losses were higher with 80,000 killed or wounded and another 30,000 or more prisoners captured. In addition, they lost more than 80 pieces of artillery. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.